Gamers? Gamers? Hello? <laughs> oh no! I, the smoker, the transition, it's happening! Hi, <laughs> Mel, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, hello everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome! I'm so sorry that I really wanted today to be like a cup of cheeses and we do some fun options, you know, like Fortnite. Unfortunately, we're here uh, with studying. <laughs> <laughs> Which can also be fun. It's not, but we can make it fun. We can try and you know We just do it for a little bit and then I can feel better about myself <laughs> Tomorrow we can have all the fun <laughs> Because So uh, tomorrow around 12 p.m. EST, I'm doing the charity stream for the uh, Gamers Outreach, so that's definitely going to be super, super fun. I haven't really planned out a schedule, but there's really two things that I want to do. <laughs> and it's a little embarrassing, so you'll have to forgive me. So Rip has been trying to get me into Apex again because Faust has not been unbanned yet. And we were talking about ban invasion, but that's something completely different. <laughs> Uh, uh, so we might play a little bit of that tomorrow just to suffer, but I really want to play Among Us for whatever reason, but I haven't played Fortnite in a while, so I was like, okay, Fortnite Among Us. <laughs> and Fortnite is not as easy of a download <laughs> to a lot of cups as, um, 
Among Us, but um, I'll try to advertise it a little bit in the Discord and Twitter, but uh, feel free to join. I think it is 10 people max, but if we get definitely more than 10 people, then we could just switch to a uh, regular original Among Us. But I just wanted to get the EXP for the Battle Pass and also have fun with you cups because I want to do group uh, games. So if we have time as well, I would also like to do Scroop Leo, but again, I'll advertise later. <laughs> But yeah, let me let me scroll through, let me say my hellos, and then life will be good. Uh, uh, pause cross, yeah? <laughs> but, um, before I do that, Guy Pie, thank you so very much for a with over 21 whole hecky months. Three more months, so you're almost at two years. Let's go! <laughs> thank you for your support. I appreciate you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And, uh, hello to you. Ayo? Ayo! <laughs> Hi Robo, let's go. We're going. Hi, hi, welcome. Hi Atomic, hi, hi. I like as well. They can't keep getting away with this. <laughs> what? The study streams? Me trying to kill two birds with one stone? You're absolutely right. <laughs> hi Tano as well. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> one brain tell right now, Rip. I'm gonna be behind the chat. Wait! <laughs> Cops, you know what to do. Hand smasherators, hand smasherators, hacking hack. <laughs> Hi, Red Pie friends. Welcome, 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 welcome. If you're unaware, my name is Zipanya. I'm a bear cat VTuber. I do the gal gal and then yan yan. And today, we're not doing anything super fun, so I apologize. This shouldn't be your first impression of me. I promise I can, I can be better. <laughs> But, um, we're studying today, but hi, welcome, welcome, hi, Rip, how's your stream? I had to tune out, um, unfortunately, once we all got lost in the void, I'm like, yep, that's my, that's my time to go. I was only gonna watch one more game. <laughs> I feel so rude now, no? It's like, Tippa, why didn't you say bye? And it's just like, oh, heck. <laughs> ah, but, uh, Quad thank you so very much for the fall. Welcome to a cup club, welcome, welcome. But yeah, we just started, so uh, welcome every cub, welcome every hyena, welcome every hyena that's transforming and transitioning into cubs. Welcome! It was short but fun. It was. I um, <laughs> I got a little peek of your uh, backrooms game. Was it fun? I I didn't understand the screaming children, but I also don't understand the backrooms meme, so I don't know. <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry. Don't worry. Oh, okay. Okay. Wow, wait, what? My head my head is in the way. I'm too lazy to scroll because I want to say hello to everyone. Heck, how do I fix this? Okay, big head tip -a go. <laughs> Baby hyenas are also co called cubs. Let's go! Shared cub names. Let's go! That's super cute. I can't believe you cubs are babies. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess that's what cubs mean, but you, 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 you know. You know if you know. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, 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 welcome. <laughs> but yeah, let me scroll through chat really quick. I'll I'll get you cubs up to date, and I'll I'll actually repeat what I just said right before you cubs had raided. Uh, actually, maybe I should say that before some of you cubs leave. So heck, 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 heck. So yes, uh, welcome raiders again. My name is Sipinya. Today we are doing a study stream. It's anatomy based, so a lot of it's going to be um, based off your lower extremities or pretty much uh, your hip down. So if you're interested, feel free to stay. Feel free to chill if you like the vibes or do whatever. The purpose of the study stream is this long-winded paragraph that I wrote in a command. So uh, <laughs> feel free to uh, chill or ask questions. I'm a Bearcat student, so I you won't really know too much, but I can try my best, okay? Um, tomorrow, uh, even though we're not really having fun today, as I had mentioned previously, tomorrow we're doing a charity stream with Gamers Outreach and I'm dragging Rip along <laughs> so I can play Apex and I also want to play Among Us Fortnite! Uh, you know, the imposter mode in Fortnite so I can get the EXP. And if we have too many people, then I want to play regular Among Us! And then, if we do have time, because I do have to go to Bearcat school and I have to drive, um, maybe you could play some Scriblio, so, uh, please feel free to tune in. That's gonna be at 12 p.m. Uh, EST time. So, uh, four hours in reverse tomorrow. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm not that great at math. <laughs> Feel free to join us. It would be a pleasure to have you. But welcome, 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 welcome. Speaking of welcomes, let me politely scroll through now. Uh, welcome, hi, welcome. Hi, Metal Deer. Hi, hi, welcome. Welcome, welcome. 
Tenno says, I'm a birthday lad, but I'm also tired after studying for exams. I, I feel you. I actually have some really unfortunate news to share if I remember towards the end of this, so let me um do that. <laughs> hi, Sunny. Hi, hi. Welcome. Hi, Tips. Are you, are you muscle testing in the cute gym? Uh, no, I can't muscle test in the cute gym because I need another person. We'll explain muscle testing in a little bit. I pinky uh, bear promise you. Pop fair, pop promise you. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> hi fair, hi hi, welcome, welcome. <laughs> but yeah, do do do. Rip, thank you for the raid again. I got right there. Sunny says, "Ha, huh, since you're a gamer, yeah, gamer gamer. Let's go, let's go. I'm sure you could play all your games at the same time, split screen. Uh, maybe I could." <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I could. Uh, I have to be a true gamer though. I need to upgrade monitors. I need to have three monitors. One for Fortnite, one for regular Among Us, and one for Scribble. <laughs> All of them are like pretty timed events, so I'm sure it could work out pretty well. Uh, but knowing me, I'm gonna like accidentally if not if idol, I guess idol or AFK one of them, and someone's gonna go hacking kill me. Some cop is gonna go cheat. They're gonna look at my <laughs> three monitors. <laughs> me trying to stream the game. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah. Readers, welcome. Monte, hi, hi, welcome. Hi, Tun Tiger, hi, hi, welcome. Hi, 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 hi. So, uh, Savion, hi, hi, welcome. Quat, hi, hi, welcome. Hi, Naga, hi, New. Hi, hi. Naray, hi, hi, welcome. Hi, Swag, hi, hi. Hi, Polly. Hi, hi, welcome, 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 welcome. Hi, Carolyn, as well. Welcome. Hello, Professor Tiffany with the Gucci glasses. <laughs> My glasses are not Gucci. I cannot afford brand. I am not on brand. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Huh? And I'm a bail a bail ba what? A billionaire? So much things have left. La I can't speak anymore. <laughs> go, go, man. Let me get some oxygen in my brain. <sighs> So many things have happened in that microsecond of not paying attention. I have Gucci glasses and I'm a billionaire. I can't believe it. <laughs> oh wait, Rip, I didn't even show you out. I'm rude. <laughs> I'm rude. I'm rude. I'm sorry. Hi, Selica. Hey, welcome. Hi, Thals as well. Dropping big bucks for the horror half? No, Thals, just wait till October. Please, it's okay. <laughs> so I should probably talk a little bit more about uh, what we're doing tomorrow but one of our stretch goals is going to be uh playing a horror game so big uh <laughs> i hope i hope to not get there the stream's gonna be really short so uh maybe like three hours so uh please look forward to a horror game in october and spooky mom hi kaya hi hi welcome hey tip here to wish you a good night Mwah. Oh, no. Uh, uh, please have a good night in the sweetest of dream dreams. Yes. Uh, thank you for stopping by and congratulations on your senpai noticing you. <laughs> I saw your uh, latest tweet, so eh -he -he -he. <laughs> But thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> I need tip a horror. Okay, Thoughts, what game do you actually want me to play though? Realistically, what game you'd be like, I would be absolutely stoked if you played this and I would cry. <laughs> Out of out of pure curiosity. <laughs> ah, Tipsy, hi hi, welcome. Hi Tip and chat, long time no chat. Yes, it is been uh it's been quite a bit. Hello? <laughs> I hope all is well and that you're okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Ah, Rift, hi hi, welcome as well. Hope you're well. I am super well. Dies. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. So, lost in vivo? That's a banger. <laughs> No, but I saw Ruth play it, but I guess I can play it, but I get- I, I know this is stupid. I get really scared of games that are really good with their environment. <laughs> I saw your stream, I saw Rip's stream, and I was gonna say Selic for whatever reason. Selic did not play that game. <laughs> but I have a vague idea of what happens. And I just also remember Rip walking around in a circle, 360, multiple times. <laughs> and there's a dog. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess the low poly like horror games are not too bad, but it's still really scary. Even the uh, game that Rip just played, the Backrooms one kind of unsettled me. Played it but didn't stream it? Oh, okay, see? Big brain. <laughs> but yeah, I'll definitely consider it though. What? <laughs> Did you? Are you okay? <laughs> I am... I'm so sorry to hear that, but I'm glad that you're in good enough health to be in the comfort of your own home, question mark, and that you're you're here, and from the sounds of it, 
from the sound of typing because I'm just reading into it. Uh, that it, you're well now and stable, so I I hope for no more heart attacks in the future. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hope those are things that uh, modifiable lifestyles can help, and it's just not out of your control. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the dark picture games could be something then. I'm actually not sure. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with dark pictures. One moment. Dark. Dark picture games. Oh no, this is like the spooky, spooky games. <laughs> I I don't know if I have the heart for this. Oh wait, no. Wait, my brain, it's going. Wait, are these the same people who made this game that just recently came out? No, it looks like it. Never mind. Never mind, I'm sorry. I'll stop talking. I have, I have no idea about horror games, as you can tell. Um, one of the screenshots in the um, Google searches looked like that recent game that just came out, The Quarry. So I'm like, oh, look at those rambunctious teens in the woods. <laughs> but yeah. Gal? Gal. Thank you, Foss, by the way. I appreciate your suggestions. Gal, right back at you, Pai. Did you say yes? I'm actually doing better than I have in the past 25 years. I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> but yes, please do take care of your health. Serious. Above all else, I know healthcare is super expensive and health insurance is a scam in the US. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> if you ever feel super unwell, your health becomes the number one priority. Even if it costs lots of money, please do get yourself checked if it's something serious. <laughs> Selig says, it's like what I just played. It's a series new and skip streamed. Oh! Oh! Okay, my brain is working. <laughs> yes, they played that one game with the... The only thing I unfortunately remember is just like a spear going through someone. And maybe Egypt. I'm so sorry. It's not that I didn't want to watch the stream. I just never get to catch it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Iron Lung was really short and spooky. Oh, put, put that put that on the list. <laughs> What about Spooky's House of Jump Scares? I would cry. <laughs> jump scares are like my least favorite thing. Okay, so I guess environment's really bad and jump scares are super, super bad too. <laughs> ah. But I, I don't mind, but I also, I also see replay it, but at the same time, if I just close my eyes and look at the floor, I'm sure I'll be okay. Maybe. <laughs> Did she says I am blessed? I get my health care free to the uh, Veterans Administration. You're set. What the heck? <laughs> so I, I, uh, no, maybe I shouldn't do that honest confession. <laughs> I, I'm just glad that everything's okay. I guess I can slip in an honest confession. Uh, for whatever reason, Bearcat didn't like work out and everything. I contemplated about joining the military for benefits, but then I realized how soft I am as a Bearcat, and I'm like, hmm. I respect those who go. <laughs> but if I'm like graduate school didn't work out, I'd be like, oh heck. <laughs> Big heck. <laughs> Rumpel says, Tip of playing the scariest horror game of them all? Minecraft. <laughs> Minecraft is really scary though. All the cave sounds are super spooky. I don't like it. <laughs> Play backgrounds with you, I'll protect you. Okay. Protect me from the screaming children. I don't know what else is there, but <laughs> whatever else is there, I will be more than happy to try. Soma? I have Soma! I don't have Outlast. I did look at a streamer play Outlast, and that's a little too spooky. Soma, I heard, is spooky, but it has a safe mode, so I feel a little bit better about it. Dead Space, I have no idea about it. Being scared equals bad? Exactly! Me playing a horror game? Bad. <laughs> you tip <laughs> Me going pew 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 and being a like gun enthusiast in another life would be really interesting. <laughs> ah, so I'm good. I'm very excited. GTFOs, good too. Why am I not like familiar with these games? I feel like a boomer. <laughs> a boomer with video games. I'm like back in my day it was him taro ham ham heartbreak and maple story. <laughs> What's all these horror games you're talking about? <laughs> Oh, it's like a shooter zombie. It looks like... It looks scary. What the heck? <laughs> uh, it... it Look, I, I don't know GTFO. And I've never played Killing Floor. But wow, it looks like Killing Floor. <laughs> the idea of multiplayer shooting zombie horror things. Got it, got it, got it. 
<laughs> but I'll keep it in the mental list or I'll also just go back and stream but if you have any suggestions as well this is not a shill but I guess it has to be um on my discord I do have a suggestions page so if you're like here's this list of games that I'm just passionate about and you would maybe enjoy playing because I enjoy playing it sure <laughs> i i will politely check them out because again a lot of these are just like not familiar for, with me so i apologize but yeah did you says i was in field artillery a red leg i blew things up professionally and that was 27 years ago <laughs> oh no a professional i'm like i'm honored to be in the presence of a professional actually i think that's so cool <laughs> it, it's the technique you know the technique the technique <laughs> Val says I remember to have refused to explore in Minecraft out of fear. <laughs> it was super scary. I didn't know what to do in Minecraft. Why do you think I had to do the baby mode? Even the baby mode scared me. <laughs> I miss your streams. I well, I'm glad you're here. No worries, no worries. <laughs> glad to have you though. Um, and, and every every cup too. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Would any of the Resident Evil games be too spooky for you? Uh, the one that um, Selick played when he was speedrunning didn't seem too scary. The one with the guy, the big guy, with the girl, with the guy, with the curly hair. I don't know. I've never played a zombie game. Carlos the Hucker, yes! I I don't know anything about Carlos, but I do, I do admit that that guy is uh, of high temperature. But that's the only one I think I'm familiar with, and I think the whatever one they're remaking, yes. <laughs> Sorry to be so like, oh, uh, the one with the guy, yeah, 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 the guy. <laughs> Cause please, again, I don't know horror games. It just like completely passed me because I'm just a scaredy cat or a scaredy bear cat to um, be more exact. <laughs> anyway, it cups play five and punch boulders and volcanoes. What? <laughs> what? 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 What is Resident Resident Evil Five Volcano? You're right. <laughs> You're right. There is just a whole booty volcano scene in here with some guy that looks like the Terminator. <laughs> That's the R three remake. I think RE RE games might not be too spooky for you. Okay, fingers crossed. <laughs> Tippa could just have fun hacking up zombies? Yeah, what's that, what's that one game that people play? That I think you're left on an island or something. This is so specific. I'm so sorry. Um, That you're left on an island and it's supposed to be like a fun zombie game. Like the attitude and atmosphere is fun, but the zombies are still care. Oh, this is literally Dead Island. <laughs> See, why can't I play a game like that? <laughs> RE1 may be pretty spooky though. RE2 and RE3, nah. Alright, I, I wanna play 3, right? That's the game with the Carlos. <laughs> with the Carlos, I'm so sorry. <laughs> There's always the old bug called the forest or plasmophobia. No thanks. I've seen, um, oh my goodness. I've seen uh, Selic play that with Rip and New, and uh, I don't know, just it's a little spooky. <laughs> a little spooky. That island has that banger. Who, who do you voodoo? Oh, I'll have to check it out. Oh, I, I will politely. I will politely check it out. <laughs> okay, Cubs, I have to go study. I actually have to do, I want to talk about games. I, I really do. I really, really do. But I gave myself like an hour, hour and a half max, and hopefully we can get through a good chunk of this. And I'm already at my like hour and a half, so I'm like, or 30 minutes. So I only have like about an hour because I have some tutoring uh, thing. So we'll see about it. Left 4 Dead 2 may be pretty old, but still really good. Why is that familiar? I know I... Uh, I have to I have to look it up. I'm so sorry. Left 4 Dead 2. Oh! Uh, the, the logo is familiar. I know that sounds kind of dumb. Isn't this the game where um, it has co-op as well? Wasn't... Weren't some of the Hello Life uh, members playing this game or something like that? My brain kind of, uh... Did you says, what about the Japanese Komini horror game? You know, honestly, I have no idea about that game. But it, I know what game you're talking about. It's called the Comedian Store. No idea about it. <laughs> Playing Fatal Frame? M me trying to type, what is Fatal Frame? <laughs> oh, I remember 
for this? This is the photography game! Cute! It's not cute because I, I, I swear it's just gonna be a bunch of jump scares. But the designs look neat at least. Your boy's gonna touch some grass? Okay, touch grass for all of us, please. <laughs> Please and thank you. I haven't I mean I went outside earlier today, but I didn't do it to enjoy life I just did it for work <laughs> Inscription's really great. It's just a creepy environment, but nothing too spooky. Isn't that the card game? Is it was it really supposed to be like a horror game? I mean I wouldn't mind I I, I just thought it was like a very uh, dark aesthetic card game <laughs> I, I never look too much into it other than I think people like it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let me see. Typey of the Den may be a fun tips game. I did play Typey of the Den and it was fun. <laughs> I have a really good idea for horror actually. Join Skip New Me in the Island. In VR? <laughs> bruh, bruh, bruh. I don't think you understand. When I play horror games, I look down. This is me playing the horror games. You, you can't see me, but I'm just like, mmm. <laughs> I don't... The, I don't know why you said the island. I, I, it would be the most boring POV ever. That's the worst thing about me playing a horror game. <laughs> ah, anyway, there's a new Yomawari that will be coming out soon. There's so many horror games out there. So many horror games to politely ignore. <laughs> politely ignore, but I will definitely check them out because I do want to get out of my comfort zone because I think it'd be fun. And I like a lot of the psychological aspects of some of these horror games like and their story with it i'm just a baby <laughs> i used to watch a lot of um oh eh, oh, i'm so sorry i was like don't get distracted but i'm like here's my tangent i used to watch a lot of let's players back in the day play a lot of horror uh, rpg games because i was just a scaredy cat <laughs> and you know they had really good stories so i'm sure all these like hi uh, graphics games that aren't just pixels or uh, on our RPG maker are super cool as well. Tips about Lies I only. <laughs> See, I would if I didn't just watch Ike from Niji Sanji play. <laughs> but I can try it out for sure. And I played Doki Doki Literature when it came out. Super cute game. What I do in horror is squint my eyes and I can barely see what's going on, but I have enough information on where I'm going. That's exactly what I'm basically doing in the game. If I'm boring, we don't care. Wait, I'm gonna be boring you with the uh, with oh my gosh, where am I? With da 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 da, da. anatomy. Okay, we have to go anatomy now because now it's 31 minutes into stream. Wah, wah. Okay, so let's get into it. Um, by chance, is the music okay or is it too repetitive? I listened to it yesterday without really thinking, and I was like, hmm, Persona 5 vibes. <laughs> I'm a gamer. Anyway, rain time, please. <laughs> so, huh? Music's good so far? Okay, because I know it. I, I can hear it looping, but it doesn't bother me too much. Not 31. <laughs> what was this? Why is that a global? <laughs> anyway, mm, hold on. Alright. So, today, anatomy, yes! Mm. So today we're studying a little bit of anatomy, but we're applying it to scenarios that I will do four years from now in the future. So we're, so this is a little study guide I made. I'm actually really excited about it because it looks so good! <laughs> I, I think it looks so good and I don't, I don't want to like, I don't want to be that person, but it looks good. <laughs> it's um, bookmarked, this is on Google Docs, so basically if I ever get lost, I could just click it, I could be like, whoa, you know? And then I go back to the top. Hip bone connected to the funny bone. The hip bone connected to the hip bone. Hip bone connected to the hip bone. You have three parts of your hip, actually. <laughs> Any actually, you know, I, I'll just show it. Hold on. Hip. Hip three part. Oh, what? What? Hold on. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. I can't find a decent picture. Hip, hip, should I look up hip divisions? I, 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 I guess, I guess. Let me go back to the Google Docs. 
this is gonna like mess up my thing, but I don't care anymore. So yeah, I, yeah, your hip bone connected to your hip bone. The hip bone connected to your hip bone. Ah, the hip bone connected to your hip bone, and now you have a whole hip. Only one part though. Anyway, so 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 so. So how we're gonna do this is that we're gonna divide this into, um, ah, sorry, sorry. Uh, we're gonna divide this into four different sections. So we're gonna be doing palpation, and I'll be kind of going over palpation. And some of us are I've able to. <gasps> Toro, Toro, <laughs> Toro, hi, 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 hi! Thank you so much for the raid. Hi, Toro. Hi, Raiders. Welcome, welcome. Made it just in time. I was procrastinating the last 30 minutes, but now you're here for education. Welcome to our own. My name is Zipanya. I'm a big cat VTuber. I do the gal gal and the nya nya. And now I study, but what were you up to? Let me give you a shout out. Persona 4 Golden! Let's go! I hope you're enjoying it a lot. Um, I've been trying to get FG to play Persona 4 Golden because that was the only one available on Steam at the time, and I guess it still is. And I was just like, please get into the Persona series. So many people have gotten into Persona through Persona 4. Instead of <laughs> three. So I'm just like, I feel like four is still a good entry point, you know? And so I hope you're enjoying the series and I hope you had a super good stream. Gotta keep up with my studies during the summer? Same. <laughs> but welcome, welcome, welcome. Feel free to chill out, hang out, grab a little snack and look, but I appreciate the raid. Thank you. But yeah, I'm <laughs> gonna go back into it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> So, palpation is just a really funny word for, like, touch, or to palpate, or to, like, touch and identify a structure. So, again, we're focusing on our lower extremities, which, again, is going to be everything hip and below. Um, some of the palpations we're going to be focusing on are going to be the thoracolumbar and pelvis area. So, okay, not necessarily below the hip, um, but uh, let's see about your iliac crest so if you put like your hands on your hip right everything down is where we're gonna be trying to palpate uh, minus the feet we haven't really got there yet so palpating again is gonna be that touch and identify ROM or ROM or range of motion is just gonna be some stuff that I have to do with Goni Goni is a very cute device I feel like it's better to grab a picture where pretty much I measure degrees of motions oh <laughs> I shouldn't have just type goni. Hold on. Where you can measure uh, how much motion a person has, and you can assess it by how many degrees of flexion or extension or whatever mo uh, movement that you're trying to record. With that, you get the range like, oh, they have 30% of hip flexion, but the normal is 120. Wow, this guy sucks. But you can't say that to people. <laughs> You'll just be like, whoa, that's actually pretty concerning. Why can't you move your hip that much? Well, let's see what we can do. <laughs> <laughs> and you use a tool like, um, mm, is there someone with a bigger goni? <laughs> I'm not trying to judge their goni size, but I'm like, this is like baby size. Da -da -da. So yeah, goni is a tool like this, and pretty much it's just like, oh, do this motion, and then you read pretty much the degrees or the numbers onto it, but we'll look more into that later when we actually do get there. We're also going to do ML ugh, MLT. MLT is an abbreviation for muscle length testing. This is basically kind of... Did, oh, I'm like, did my music stop? Hello? Um, MLT is kind of a fun way to assess, hey, do you have tightness in a muscle? And we'll talk about that in detail, especially with the hips. A lot of people, a lot of my classmates, have uh, some tightness in their hips, and it's too important to identify, okay, yeah, you have tightness in your hips, but what muscle are we trying to talk about uh, specifically, and how can we help stretch it and train it and do all that good stuff and the last thing we're going to try to talk about is mmt which is manual muscle testing so this is a strength assessment so if you're kind of like bro i've never skipped leg day before okay cool Let, let's see it <laughs> so let's do it okay so 
there's kind of a rubric. The reason why I'm going over this is because there's a whole entire hacking rubric of what I have to do and we'll go over that and I have to do this Sunday in front of my professor because I'm going to be honest with you Cubs, 100% transparency. I had a written exam yesterday in this class because there's a risk uh, a what? <laughs> there's a written portion and there's a physical portion, correct? For the written, I failed it. And it's one of those things where I'm not one of those people who are like, oh no, I've never failed before. But I'm like, wait, okay, look, listen, I've never failed this hard before. Which is why, um, if you saw on the Twitter post, I had a meeting with my professor because I'm like, hey, look, a lot of the wording and the writing in this exam was really confusing. It turns out I basically just picked the opposite answer for everything. So that just really sucked. And he's like, you know it. And I'm like, apparently I do not. <laughs> so me doing this uh, stream and me helping uh, me kind of just going over it's gonna help me do better for the uh, physical aspect of the practical or the exam and hopefully through that it'll kind of counterbalance a really bad writing grade <laughs> so let's kind of get to it so when we are doing this kind of practical we as in just <laughs> me I guess it's important to do several steps before we even go into these uh, particular tests. Uh, really important, always introduce yourself and have like your patient identifiers. So I would be to the patient, Hi, my name is Stephania. I'm a student at Bearcat University. How are you today? Uh, before we begin, if you could just say your uh, full name and your date of birth, and then you, that's how you confirm because there could be a billion John Smiths, but you want to make sure that you're treating the right John Smith. And normally they don't have the same birthday, so... <laughs> <laughs> we can identify it from there. And they normally don't have the same appointment time either. Uh, so those are normally your good uh, go-to identifiers. Having the patient state their full name and date of birth. And then we go into the test. So like I said, palpation is going to be locating these certain structures, which can be very important for various factors. Again, we're going to keep it pretty general. So when you explain to the patient, hey, what is this? You would explain like, hey, the purpose of palpation <laughs> uh, palpation is to locate and assess the target structure and potentially find abnormal abnormalities. <laughs> I'm going to say that in the test and they're going to kick my booty. It's like, Tippa, please. So pretty much what's important is that some structures are much easier to find than others. It's important to have the right patient position. So if you were looking to palpate for whatever reason, your gluteal muscles or your gluteal muscles or your butt muscles, there's not really a reason why you should have your patient lying on their back. They should be lying on their belly. And if you want to help them with modesty, because that's super important, because not everyone is comfortable getting half naked in front of a stranger, and I completely understand and agree with that. <laughs> it's important to provide a drape and like, hey, do you need a blanket? And that can, again, be for either modesty or, hey, maybe it's even just cold in the clinic. <laughs> um, palpating the correct structure is very important. <laughs> um, sometimes to confirm a structure, there's a... Um, muscle that attaches to it so we can have the patient do like a certain action and we'll be like hey we're on the right structure hey this person did hip flexion we know this muscle does hip flexion and this muscle originates at this uh, particular area or spot we're on the right area so then uh confirmed it's important to use like one to two fingers for palpation because if you do any more you might be applying too much pressure to the patient they may feel super uncomfortable form structure I have no idea actually. <laughs> I'll communicate with the patient. Pretty much, you should do this exactly after the explanation of the test. Like, hey, again, the purpose of palpation is to um, locate and assess the target structure and potentially find any abnormalities. It's okay to place my hands on you. Right now, we're gonna be, again, gluteal muscles. I'm gonna have you lay on your stomach. I'm gonna place a pillow underneath your hips for comfort. Do you need a drape? Yes, no, no, okay. And I'm going to palpate at your butt. I'm going to place my hand. Is that okay? Asking consent is super, super important because some people, again, aren't not really sure what you're doing. And it's really important to make sure that you're using layman's terms for a lot of things. Because when I was palpating on um, one of my friends just for practice, it wasn't like a classmate. I'm like, hey, can you like rotate your pelvis? And they're like, my what? And I'm like, <laughs> your, your what? <laughs> so I always, always 
you know, be careful with that. You know, instead of pelvis, say, oh, your hips. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> then she says in VA, we use the last four of your SS number for ID. See, that's super smart. <laughs> We should, but normally a lot of times, maybe like especially inpatient when within hospitals, they have like a little band around their wrist and it's just like name, date of birth. And it's like, okay, you confirmed it with me in voice. Let me just double check on the wristband really quick. Okay. Okay. And always uh, make sure that my body mechanics are okay. Making sure that the table is leveled and I'm just not straining myself for no hecking reason. So now that we got through the palpation checklist, let's kind of go through some structures and feel free to go along with me. Some of these are very easy to do on yourself, while others are kind of... I, I don't think you can do it. <laughs> not, not because I don't believe in your ability to do it. It's kind of like, uh, you'll, you'll have to lay down and we're all probably like sitting in our computers, so, hmm. Anyway. So... ASIS. ASIS is going to be the abbreviation for anterior superior iliac spine. So there's actually two ways we can do this. We can either do this in supine or standing. Is that a challenge? I I, I guess. I mean, you can you can do it. I love I love participation. I feel like if you do it i'm not like really a hands-on person by any means but i feel like if you do it and all that trial and error you should be okay you know so ah so again so to palpate the structure i think it's really important to see a picture of it especially if you're not familiar with it so let's look at a picture of the asis this is a big booty picture that gets the point across so the ASIS is right here circled in red. This is important as some of our um, hip muscles that we'll talk about, hip, well, some of the lower extremity muscles we'll talk about do insert into the um, ASIS. So as you see, that kind of align, that kind of, it does align with where uh, this clinician is palpating. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to find the iliac crest. When we're looking for the iliac crest, the iliac crest is just right here so when you put your hands on your hip this is most likely where you're placing your hands on and you can feel the crest again you can do it even in your chair it might be a little harder no you can do it <laughs> I, i'm doing it now <laughs> or you can do it again in standing if your headphones cord is uh, that long so once you feel it or if you're still trying to identify where to feel it, to find the iliac crest, you need to come to the sides of your body and palpate through the soft tissue. So yes, even though you do put your hands on your hip, you need to confirm that you are at the iliac crest. So if you have a little bit, you do, if you, everyone does, uh, has soft tissue right there covering it. So make sure you kind of dig a little bit deeper, apply a little bit more pressure to feel that crest. Hold down towards the end of the feet. So pretty much what they're saying is that your hands even though you are putting your hands on your hips, you know how we kind of grasp our hips? They want you to have a leveled or kind of flat hand when you do this. So once you feel the side of your body, bring those hands flat down until you feel the ledge. That ledge you're going to feel is going to be your iliac crest. And just as a side note, uh, the iliac crest is going to be higher in men than women. So if you're a guy and you feel it right away, woohoo! If you're a girl, uh, you may have to go down just a, just a little bit more. So what's going to happen is that once you find that iliac crest, we're going to move our hands anteriorly. Anterior is just another fun word for front. So we're going to move our hands to our front and we're going to find these little ledges or bony prominences in front of our hips. So pretty much when we're standing, because this is definitely an easier standing for whatever reason, you can keep the index finger, so that like flat hand that you had, feeling that ledge of the uh, iliac crest. Keep the index finger there, and you can bring your thumbs out anteriorly, and then you're going to use your thumbs to feel for that area, and you should feel a bony prominence. Ta-da! If you got it, that's going to be your anterior superior iliac spine, otherwise known as your ASIS. So, first structure down! Mo mo more to go. So, the next one we're going to do is posterior superior iliac spine so this is actually pretty similar so we're familiar now with finding our iliac crest again go to the sides and go down with a flat hand until you feel that ledge now what you're gonna do because your patient's not gonna be standing or supine supine is just, again a fancy word for laying on your back we're gonna have the patient laying on their belly or on their tummy 
<laughs> so from there, hands on the hips, you're going to be using your thumbs to go into the patient's midline. So as you see in this picture right here, the thumbs are towards the midline, and you're going to palpate along the hips. Um, some people may have dimples in the back. Yeah, some are very obvious, while others are a little more subtle. But those dimples normally are going to be where you're going to find the, the PSIS, or the posterior superior iliac spine. Let's find us a beautiful picture of it. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I don't know if this is beautiful, but I guess this is like an x-ray version of what we're going to be palpating. Ta-da! So you see how the hands are still on the iliac crest? The thumbs are going towards the midline, and once you feel the, the bony prominence right here towards the midline, or again this little gap or uh, dimple, that's going to be the posterior superior iliac spine. So what about your S2 spine this process or tubercle? Okay. What the heck is an S2? So your vertebra, or I'm um, sorry, your, your spinal cord is divided in all these fun segments. <laughs> let's use this cute color coded, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, let's use this fun, cute color coded image. So our body is divided into four, or sorry, our spine is divided into four parts. We have the cervical, which is going to be in relation to your neck, and you have eight vertebrae, so you see in the pink to red, or I guess this is still pink. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, I can't count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What? Why does it say C, A? You only have seven. What? What? Anyway, we're gonna ignore that because we're not there. <laughs> Pretty bruh? <laughs> Thoughts, please. I can't even do the boom sound. <laughs> like, how, wait, how do you do the boom sound? Pretty <laughs> bruh. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. So, yeah, you have your cervical, you have your thoracic. Cervical, you should have seven. Thoracic, you should have eight. Uh, eight, oh my gosh. Twelve vertebra. Your lumbar vertebrae is gonna have five. So one, two, three, four, five. Wow, the numbers really match up here. <laughs> and at your sacrum, it's gonna be, uh, it should also be five. What the heck, I hate this picture. <laughs> Everything I know is a lie. <laughs> the gist of it. <sighs> Everything is sectioned off and basically for each vertebra, it's assigned a number. So your first vertebra in your cervical area, or cervical region, or in the cervical vertebrae is going to be C1, and it goes C1 to C7. Your thoracic, the same thing. It's going to be T1 to T12. Lumbar, L1 to L5. L1 representing, again, lumbar 1 vertebrae, or vertebra. And so, same thing with the sacrum. So, the sacrum is going to be, again, at our hips right over here and this little tail and oh sorry I don't have my mouse there this little tail and that you see right here that's gonna be your coccyx or your tailbone so you know when you fall and you're like ah my tailbone yeah that's exactly what you're accidentally smashing <laughs> but yeah so let's get this out of the way so that is what it's talking about when it's referencing s2 and when it says finest process uh, you have different processes in the vertebrae. There's transverse and spinous. Spinous literally is just referring to the spine. So you know when you can feel like the bumps along the midline of your back? What you're going to be feeling is the back of your spine. And that is the spinous process, those bumps that you feel. This is a little more difficult, but you can find the transverse uh, process off to the side, but we're not going to go into that. But transverse just, in this case, is going to be like the left and right of that spinous process, which might just be easier to show a picture, so I'm so, so, so sorry. <laughs> Let's get this. One moment, one moment. Alright, I'm, I'm picking my favorite giraffe-looking vertebra. So as you see here, this is the spinous process, again, the thing that you're going to be touching at the very back. And the transverse processes are just coming out right here. This is your actual spine right here. First time chatter? Holy heck. SG1029? Are you a mouse? Bruh. <laughs> Why are you hurting my feelings like that? You come into my chat, a first time chatter, and you're like, are you a mouse? It's like you didn't even read my info. Like, I spent the hour working on my bio two years ago for you to call me a mouse. <laughs> I 
I hate it here. <laughs> Cringe. I need a mod. <laughs> I need a mod. I need like a safe word with my mods. <laughs> Can we be friends? <laughs> Ban. <laughs> That's first time chatted too. Why is there so many new people? Is someone talking uh, poop about me out there? <laughs> but welcome, Faust. Welcome for Faust underscore VT. Wow, are are you a VTuber too? Nice, 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 nice. Are you are you new or something or like? <laughs> I'm gonna go die now. Hold on. That joke took the absolute air out of me. I'm like coughing. <laughs> But welcome, Ashley. Welcome, Val. So glad I have nice new first time chatters. <laughs> hi, Val. Hi, hi. Welcome, welcome. Berka hug to you. Welcome. I came in with the raid? Oh, my bad. Oh, thank you for the headband, though. Thank you, thank you. Well, belated welcome for the raid. What are drip or tutorials? I appreciate you lurking here. I hope you're learning a little bit here about this giraffe looking spinous process, you know? <laughs> Sorry, Tip, I had to do it. No, you're absolutely A okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good, but hey, hey, welcome. I hope you're doing super well, especially on Sonic's birthday. Hello? <laughs> anyway, welcome, welcome. Uh, give me one moment. I'm halfway through the story mode of Origins. That game just came out today. What the heck? I'm polite, politely avoids. <laughs> Anyway, hold on. Let me speed through this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Now that we talked about the S2 process, so S2, to find it, you're going to have your patient prone. So basically from there, prone again is going to be laying on your tummies and you're going to provide proper draping because you might have to, um, how do you call it? I was gonna say unravel their pants, but that sounds like I'm like, ooh, I'm taking the little string. <laughs> and <laughs> um, you might have to lower it a little bit more to palpate, so to provide modesty and to not see their booty. <laughs> uh, you would provide a towel and you would just tuck it underneath like their shorts or pants and then like again bring it down. So again, the first step is going to be to find the iliac crest, again finding that ledge, and now we're going to try to find L5. So. Really a big hint here is that when you feel for the iliac crest and you bring your thumbs in, when you're, when you're, I, I, I'm going to need a hand camera one day, <laughs> one day I'm going to reveal my hands and you're going to see me do this, I promise. <laughs> um, when you bring your uh, thumbs towards the midline from when you're grabbing onto the iliac crest, approximately you're around L4. L4 again standing for lumbar, for the fourth lumbar vertebrae. We want to find L5 though. So what happened is that L5, which is going to be directly underneath L4 because that's how numbers work, um, L5 is going to be smaller than L4. So when you try to palpate from the L4 to try to find L5, your finger is going to sink into the person's skin as you try to palpate it. So what you're going to do is that you're going to extend the patient's hip. To do that, to extend, you're going to have them do hip extension. Hip extension, when they're laying down like that, is going to be them kicking their feet up. Like, you know, when you're trying to, like, learn how to swim and you have a paddle board and you're kicking your feet, or I guess normal swimming. <laughs> I, I don't know how to swim, okay? I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, that kind of idea, that kicking up motion is going to be your hip extension. So, when you're still feeling for that sinking area, you're going to feel L5 further anterior away from your finger what did i write what did i write further anterior away it, it's gonna what it's gonna what i i guess it's the idea that hey l5 will move when you do hip extension so from there you're gonna palpate down the sacrum which is gonna be right above our tailbone that big fused bone area of the sacrum and the next bony prominence we feel from L5, we should feel like a, a bump, hence the bony prominence, is going to be S2. So how we're going to confirm that S2 is there is that we will go back to the iliac crest, go to the PSIS, again our posterior superior iliac spine, we're going to draw, draw, sorry, draw a line between the thumbs, and within that line should be S2. That's also another good indicator, because when we find the PSIS, um, which is the dimples that we can see in this patient, around that area should also be S2. Ba-bam. 
I can't believe that she's playing a Sonic game on a day like this. I know, he should just be appreciating it in the moment, you know? Got the best endings for Sonic 1, CD, and now 2? S2? Sonic 2? Sonic 2 confirmed? <laughs> SJPs. So. Mm, I'm literally getting paid to play. <laughs> you sound like a tester. <laughs> I'm literally getting paid. <laughs> Stop. So another structure he wants us to find is the Sacro Sulcus. There's really no video on this, so I was a little confused. Um, but you would do the same thing apparently. You would have the patient prune, so laying on their tummy, providing appropriate drape of the hips, find the PSIS, and basically go more medial, and you should feel your, um, what do you call it? Your fingers go into a dip. So right here we see our posterior superior alex spine, and then we let our thumb slip right here. Again, thumb being that one finger palpation. This is going to be our little divot, and that's going to be the sacral sulcus. Iliac crest we've done. L4 we technically done already because we know that's going to be the level of our iliac crest. Let's go find our 12th rib. <laughs> why Why the heck not? <laughs> so, the 12th rib is interesting because I'm not sure if you cubs are aware, but you have something called floating ribs. Let me, let me, let me grab a picture. God, I wish. You're, you, there's no wishing. You already have it, my dude. Anyway. So, this is your ribs. Maybe not your ribs, but <laughs> your ribs in general. So, this is your sternum. So, you know how you feel like this really hard bone when you try to touch the middle of your chest? This is what you're touching, the sternum. And from there, you're going to have your ribs attach onto the sternum, for the most part. One through ten... No. 1 through 9 are going to be true ribs, while 10, 11, and 12 are not going to be true ribs. These are going to be considered false ribs because they're not connecting directly onto the sternum. So now let's palpate this rib. How, how do we get to rib 12? Put them back? Politely putting back. <laughs> mm, ribs on the grill covered in sauce? I feel so bad because I, I like ribs, but I'm a baby and I don't like anything with bones in it. <laughs> 10 looks like it's going to poke my lungs. No, the whole purpose of your uh, ribs is to protect your lungs. Have you ever heard of a punctured lung? No. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Anyway. So yeah, 12 rib. Same thing, prone, find the iliac crest. But now, instead of going down like we've been doing for all the other palpations, going towards the sacrum level, what we're going to be doing from the iliac crest is we're going to actually raise up. So with that same flat hand from the iliac crest, we're going to move forward. And the first bony prominence we should feel onto our side is going to be our 12th rib. And we can kind of trace the 12th rib back. The 12th rib is... Hmm. Excuse me. It's gonna run from the side of the body to the spine, and we can trace it with our fingers once we do palpate it. But yeah. I finished my last exam today. <gasps> congratulations! I'm so jealous. <laughs> congratulations, congratulations, and how well. I know some people are taking, I, I can't do it in my program, but some of my coworkers are um, doing their undergrad right now, and as you may be familiar with in the US, I don't know if it applies to anywhere else, and the summer it's normally a smaller, um, how do you say it, a time frame. So you could have summer A, summer B, or summer C. Summer A and B are like six week courses, and they cram the courses like to heck and back, and summer C is like a normal full term. Maybe like I think like a week or two shorter than like a fall or spring. But yeah, a lot of people who have taken summer A, the first part of summer, and summer B being the second part, and summer C again being both the first and second part, are finishing. I'm so jealous! I want to be done with school! Ah! Anyway. Mm -mm. But congratulations. <laughs> Did you says unexpected company gotta run? Oh no, no worries. Please have a good one. It was nice seeing you. Staying good health and all that good jazz. Okay, bye 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 bye. <laughs> Would like to know my favorite historical fact? Fun fact. Queen o Victoria's eldest grandchild was Kaiser William. 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 William, William, William Two. I. <laughs> not familiar with these people i'm so sorry my history has kind of gone out the window i did well in american history like in high school and, and yep that's it <laughs> that's it but anyway i cannot focus on the history i have to focus on the future <laughs>
<laughs> Which I guess is it. Anyway. So yeah, let's find the Erector's Finding now. So now that we found our 12th rib again going from the Iliac Crest and finding our next bony prominence or bump up, the Erector's Finding muscles are very interesting because they're actually a group of muscles, um grouped together <laughs> a fun way to remember it is a mnemonic of I love spaghetti or I love spinach and it's gonna be the iliocostalis longissimus and oh, spinalis so let's grab a picture of this one okay mm. wait old dead British woman had the main antagonist of World War One as her old grandchild that's kind of spooky funny how the world works you know So from here, these are our muscles that we were just talking about, the erector spinae. These are deep, deep, deep muscles. And as you can kind of break it down by the name of the group, the erector spinae is literally muscles that help erect your spine. So it helps to keep you upright. So again, the I love spaghetti is going to be starting laterally or out from the side and going medially or into the middle. <laughs> So we have the iliocostalis, the eye, the longissimus, love, and then the spinalis right here. Spinalis kind of be neat because spinalis sounds like it or looks like it's on the spine and thankfully it is. <laughs> spaghetti. I love spaghetti. All right. So to feel that, same thing, have them lay on their belly. And what's going to happen is that as we saw in that picture, these muscles run bilaterally or we have a group of those muscles, one on each side, we're going to pretty much um, feel for that area because we know how close it is to the midline of the body, place our fingers there, and what we're going to have the patient do is to extend their back to confirm the muscle belly. So from the position that they're in laying on their stomach, st st I, I want to say tummy, <laughs> stummy, <laughs> um, you're going to have them just like, hey, can you bring your head up? Can you extend your back forward? Can you do like the little Titanic? Bow, bow. Anyway, um, I gotta start heading out for work, but I'll try to swing back soon. Study well. Thank you. I will try my absolute best. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, thank you for the small joke, and I hope you have a good rest of your everything, your day. Have a good one. Bye, 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 bye. <laughs> Drive safe. All right. So the multifidus. This one is really interesting. So the multifidus is also one of those like deeper back muscles and what I like to remember it as is that it's like a Christmas tree. That sounds absolutely horrifying, I know. Um, mm, mm, I, I guess this picture is okay. So you see how it zigzags? This is a muscle that goes runs up I think almost to like your cervical or up to your neck. Really, really interesting stuff. And so this muscle, what you're gonna do is you're going to pretty much go below the iliac crest because you see, here's our iliac crest that we've been palpating throughout the session. Go underneath it and pretty much one finger width off the lumbar spine because again, we know where, how to find our spine is process. And we're marking again with our other landmark of the iliac crest. Kind of just place a finger right there. What you're going to do to confirm or to feel a muscle belly is that you're going to have the patient do the opposite action. So if you're feeling for the left, you're going to ask your patient, hey, can you like raise your right leg really quick while they're laying in their stomach? And that should contract the multifidus or this muscle belly. And there you go. It's an interesting muscle because it's contralateral or it has a contralateral action, which is just a fancy word for it. It has like an opposite side action. Yes, even though you're trying to palpate for this muscle belly on the left side, you need to do action on the right to activate it. So, whoo. Hi, Baz. Hi, hi. Welcome, welcome. How are you? How how, how are the guests? <laughs> how How is life? <laughs> welcome, welcome. You made it to a slightly boring... Okay, it's not boring anymore. There's actually pictures again. <laughs> oh, wait. Hold on. Let me sip some water really quick. Alright. I'm happy. I'm hydrated. Let's go. So... 
Quadratus Submorum. This is a <laughs> really interesting muscle because I feel like I'm saying like some kind of weird magic spell. Quadratus Submorum! <laughs> and let me show you what it looks like. So this picture might not be that great because it is showing the front view when it is a muscle that attaches to the back. But I guess it doesn't matter because its origins is going to be, it's going to start off onto the iliac crest and insert itself up to these transverse process stuff that we are talking about before and onto the 12th rib which is something that we palpated earlier. So quadratus and boron, same thing, lay on their belly. The muscle is going to be much deeper than the erector spinae and a little more lateral to that. Does that make sense? In the sense that the erector spinae is kind of more directly onto the spine, and as you see, this is more lateral or more out to the side muscles, the quadratus lumborum. What you're gonna do is the same thing of finding the iliac crest. So, excuse me, flat hand to the side so you feel your little hip bones or that ledge. Find your 12th rib. So, what are we gonna do? Again, from that iliac crest, we're gonna raise our hands up until we feel the next bony bump. Our bony prominence, which is going to be our 12th rib, because remember our 12th rib is floating, and to confirm it's the 12th rib, we're going to trace it back. So from there, move fingers towards the lumbar spine. So once we do find our um, 12th rib, which would be right around here, we're going to feel towards the lumbar spine. And again, understanding that this muscle is deeper than the erector spinae, we're going to stay a little bit lateral, which is why, see this is the midline of the body. The, pa uh, the patient, the clinician's fingers right here, which is the perfect area, and just palpate through some of the soft tissue because it's a relatively deep muscle as well. To confirm that you're on the muscle belly, you want to ask your patient to perform an action of hip hiking, and this is a really awkward motion. I I I don't know the magic words of how to tell someone to hike hike their hip. Apparently, if you ask the patient to bring your hip to your shoulder. That is a good way of doing that, but when I try to explain it again to the uh, friend who's just like, I don't know what my pelvis is, I'm just like, uh... It's like, it's like how do I do that? I'm like, I, 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 just, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, do, I, do, I don't know. <laughs> um, I guess you could kind of do it in sitting. Like kind of bring your head to your shoulder, not head to your shoulder, or your head to your hip. Or the hip to the head <laughs> and that kind of like side bending motion you're doing that's a hip hiking <laughs> so from there if you feel that contraction in that correct area around the 12th rib going a little more lateral from the lumbar spine you are at the da -da 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 quadratus lumborum so now that we're done with palpations we could talk a little bit about um a range of motion okay so for range of motion, we are still dealing with the thoracolumbar lumbar and pelvis range of motion. This is the checklist that we're going to be going through. Again, we've already introduced ourselves. Hi, my name is Tipanya. I go to uh, Bearcat School University. How are you? Before we begin, let me confirm who you are. And now that we move from palpation, which is to assess and identify certain structures to identify abnormal, abnor, abnormal, abnormalities, <laughs> uh, we're going to be doing ROM or ROM or range of motion. So really you explain the test. So why are we doing this? So assessing range of motion is going to be a very crucial part to determine if you have the proper mobility and are within normal range to function and participate in daily activities, activities of daily living. <sighs> Basically, long story short, <laughs> a, a, a simpler version is, do you have enough motion in this part to do what you need to do? If you have, let's say, pain in your neck, and you have very little uh, degrees of extension in your neck, you might have trouble looking up, and you might compensate that motion by like using your whole back, like throwing your whole back up to be like, uh, to look up because you're trying to compensate for the lack of head extension or cervical extension or the ability to bring your head back. So, uh, <laughs> that's why it's super important to check your range of motion, especially if you're feeling tightness or pain and to try to identify the abnorm abnormality uh, ASAP if you can, okay? Fred, by the way, sorry, a belated congratulations to, uh, finishing everything and trying to go study biology at a uh, university. Uh, other than my 
absolute love for anatomy um i actually enjoyed my time studying biology as well so have fun okay <laughs> so with range of motion same thing patient may need to be draped because hey they may be cold or they may need it for modesty just giving them a blanket super good we want to make sure that we're moving the right body part we want to stabilize when possible we want to establish and verbalize end field. End field is a concept that it's just making sure that, hey, does this feel right? There's like soft end field, firm end field, hard end field. And a lot of the things that we're going to deal with are firm. But if for whatever reason it's soft, then it's like, okay, that's a weird abnormality. What can we do and how are we going to identify what's making the soft, you know? So we're... Uh, when we do range of motion, it's important to set the goni. Remember, that's going to be our fun little thing to determine the uh, degrees that we have. And we'll probably see a picture of it in a little bit, so there's no rush. Um, what else? What else? What else? We're going to try to preset our goni. So we'll have the person do the motion once. And we'll be like, okay, cool. If you're moving them through the motion, that's when you're going to let them know there's an end field because you're feeling that end for them. It's like, mm, that end field is firm. You do not have an end field when they're doing an active motion because you do not have their hands on them to assess that. Active uh, motions will go into maybe in a little bit. I'm not 100% sure. I'm so sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, let me see. Let me see. So we establish and verbalize end field on the first rep. We estimate range of motion while at end range. So they finally do the motion. They go as far as they can. And you're like, mm, this looks like this amount. From there, you're gonna preset the goni to make your life easier, and then you measure, and then blah, blah, blah. Anyway, let's get to it, because I, I'm, I'm almost at my time limit. <laughs> so, for thoracolumbar flexion, we can use a tape measure instead of a goni. This one is super, super easy. So, we didn't really talk about T1 as our landmarks, but we'll, 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 we'll go through it. Hi, hi, hi. Welcome, welcome. Hello. Welcome to thoracolumbar flexion. <laughs> anyway, you'll be looking. No problem, no problem. Enjoy your look. Have fun. Hi, hi. Welcome, welcome. Hi, hi. Welcome, welcome. Or welcome, welcome. Hi, hi, hi. Zero. <laughs> welcome. So, welcome also to thoracolumbar flexion. So, you're going to have the patient standing. Um. What's going to happen is that I'm going to get head pads. Thank you, 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 thank you. And from there, <laughs> you're going to need another person to probably hold on to their hips because you only want to identify motion from the thoracolumbar area. So thoraco meaning the thoracic area, which is just your, where your ribs are, and your lumbar, which is going to be your um, low back area. You do not want any other motion to be involved. Some of the landmarks of where we're going to place our tape measure is going to be T1. T1 is, again, referring to thoracic vertebrae 1. And where we can find this is underneath C7. It's kind of like, tip of please, I don't know any of this. It's like, okay, you're going to know this, though. So C7 is cervical or neck vertebrae uh, 7. And how to find that is that if you touch the back of your neck and you feel a very prominent bone sticking out, that's most likely your C7. Bring your finger down just one. And ta-da! You're on T1. Congratulations! So you're going to put the tape measure from there. You're going to place it on S2. And you're going to ask the patient, hey, can you nod your head? Nod head, chin to chest? <laughs> Sorry. That's so robotic. Um, but you're going to just ask them to basically reach down to the floor and to do this as safely as possible or without kind of any awkwardness, you'll tell them to tuck their chin into their chest, round the shoulders and reach down. So basically like, Hey, can you touch your tippy toes? So what you're going to do though, is before they bend down like that or flex, that original measurement you'll have from T1 to T2, that's going to be your initial measurement have them go through the motion of flexion that new number is going to be the cool way of how you do math so to check what their thoracic lumbar flexion is is that that new number you got from when they were flexing to the original number from when they were not flexing is going to be their range of motion anyway for extension though 
This is very similar, same thing, but you're gonna have the patient lean backwards, hence extension. We can also do lateral flexion, which is gonna be fingertip to floor and go knee. So fingertip to floor is much easier. You'll have the patient stand and you'll be like, hey, how's it going? Great, love it. Anyway, can you side bend for me or lateral flex or lean to the side and with your fingers reach towards the floor? You're gonna have someone else I um, stabilizing here because what's gonna happen is if someone's trying to reach the floor, they might raise this uh, foot up, they might hike their hip. We we want to avoid that. We want to have ac uh, accurate numbers and be as accurate as we can, hence the stabilization and making sure that they're working what we want them to work and that they're not trying to compensate. Again, recall the whole like, oh, you have limited neck extension or you can't bring your head back, you're gonna start bringing your whole back into it which is wrong you shouldn't compensate hackers you have muscles to do every action you know make sure they work <laughs> anyway so if they're standing and you're doing the tape measure your landmark now is going to be the middle finger so from the middle finger to the floor record that as the original number and to get the new number you're gonna have them flex to the side and lean over and that new number that they record is going to be the new number you're going to subtract from from the original to get the range of motion. You can also do a goni. Oh, I should probably read this because I'm actually not that familiar with it. So the goni, which is a very hard thing to see right here, is pretty clear and transparent for reasons just because it's easier to see for us. It's going to be composed of three parts. The fulcrum, the movement arm, and the stationary arm. So the fulcrum is actually right here in the center. The movement arm is the thing that's going to move along with the patient and the stationary arm is going to be whatever is perpendicular to that action. So the fulcrum is going to be on our S2 and how do we find S2 again? Remember S2 we can confirm really quick by finding the PSIS, okay sorry, iliac crest, then finding the dimples on the person's back which is their PSIS and then going touching our thumbs because we're trying to palpate on both sides and our thumbs touch down to the midline and you're most likely going to be on S2. That's where you're going to place the middle of the goni or the fulcrum. The movement arm is going to be aligned with T1 so you see this tape right up here? That's going to be your T1. Again that's going to be below C7 which is again that very bony prominence of your neck. And the stationary arm is going to be perpendicular to the floor so it's kind of like going just between his legs. What you're going to have to do is that the patient is going to lean to the side, you estimate the range. Normal and lateral flexion is going to be about 35 degrees. There's no end field for this because we're not physically grabbing the patient to assess it. This is an active motion from the patient leaning to the side so we can't assess for end field like we would in normal other range of motion measurements. We'll have the patient reset, they'll be like, okay, you did it, cool, come on up. I'll be like, mm, that looks like 20 degrees, so I'm going to preset this for myself to 20 degrees. Go in and lean, and hey, if it's about 20 degrees, cool, you have a really good eye for this. And if it's not, well, at least you're probably really close to it, so then you just make a small adjustment and record the correct number. Lumbar flexion. So this is not thoracolumbar flexion. This is just pure lower back flexion. So instead of having, again, your landmarks as um, T1 and S2, our landmarks now are just going to be S2. And we're going to place the tape measure all the way up here, 15 centimeters. And that's going to be your landmark, OK? So what you're going to do is ask the patient to nod their head or their chin to their chest and round the shoulders and reach to the floor similar to the thoracolumbar flexion and we're going to measure the new distance so the new number minus 15 is going to be the uh, their range of motion so if they lean and it's 30 somehow <laughs> just have really good lumbar flexion i suppose 30 minus 15 will be their range of motion of 15 centimeters hi blue hi hi welcome welcome Oh, all the hearts and headbats, hello. <laughs> Hope you are super well. I'm trying to like speed run uh, studying. I, I'm giving myself another uh, 15 to 20 minutes. Just, just cause, or maybe if I finish this section, it'll be super, super cool. Anyway, so the same thing with flexion. So flexion again, it's leaning in. Let's do extension. 
Extension is going to be the same thing where we're going to place our same landmarks, S2, count up 15 centimeters, and now ask the patient to lean backwards. Allow the tape measure to drop so your new number should be less than your original number because you're closing in the distance rather than increasing the distance with flexion because when you flex or lean, towards your toes or touching the toes the tape measure will stretch and you're like oh okay but when you're shortening it like this with the extension of course the new number is going to be smaller or god i hope it is <laughs> mm. let's do goni stuff so goni again we're going to be measuring the degrees so you're going to have the patient seated upright with feet firmly onto the ground to support and you're going to have their arms uh folded so it's going to be like a hmm Naga saying speed run study, nice. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah, I'm gonna be doing the same thing tomorrow, so it's fine. So what we're gonna do is that the fulcrum, again, this is the middle part right here, the fulcrum, is going to be the top of the head. The movement arm is gonna be a little weird. It's a imaginary line between the two chromium processes, which is something we didn't really talk about, but just imagine about the shoulder area. Hmm, excuse me. And the stationary arm is going to be a <sighs> imaginary line <laughs> um, along the iliac crest. So for the instructions, you're going to ask your patient to turn to one side and you're going to ask for a change of symptoms because sometimes doing trunk rotation like this is kind of strenuous for a person. Kind of, kind of stinky. <laughs> so same thing. Let's estimate the normal is going to be 45. What did we say 35 was goni wise? That's going to be the lateral flexion. So if lateral flexion is 35 degrees as normal, our normal for thoracolumbar rotation is going to be 45. So then have them rotate, have them reset, preset your goni, hope that they're normal because it didn't look like they struggled, you put it at 45, have them perform the motion again, and record. Okay? Yay! Oh, this is the worst! All right. So I think we're going to wrap up MMT and then we'll wrap up streaming itself because um, I think, uh, to be honest, I think hip palpations are kind of a little manka s. Not, not for any particular reason. I'll be like, hey, can you touch your butt bone? But um, there is a mutual that I have who got in trouble for sharing like a meme that showed someone's booty. And it, it, it's the like, why is everyone so mean to me meme? And they got in trouble for that, so I felt really bad. So I'm kind of like, even if my things are for educational purposes, I, I don't want to risk it. So keeping up with this should be okay. Shirtless guys are okay to Twitch, so yahoo. <laughs> my imagination is getting a good workout right now. That picture is so funny. I know, this guy looks like the Spongebob guy. I, he has a name, he's a famous celebrity. Uh, Spongebob, oh my gosh, what is his name? Movie. Oh my god, what is his name? Hasselhoff! <laughs> Sorry. He he looks like... Oh my gosh. So sorry, so sorry. Hold on. Yes! David Hasselhoff! <laughs> He's basically that. It's just like the movie. <laughs> anyway. Um... So now we're going to be moving to MMT. So MMT is going to be the fun stuff that you can do with your friends and family, I guess. <laughs> MMT is going to stand for manual muscle testing. Why is it important? It's important because you want to assess the strength of your muscle. Not in a cool show offy way. I mean, you, 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 you can if you want. <laughs> but, 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 it's important because sometimes if you don't, you're not able to have the strength to do certain things, it may reflect in your posture or in the way that you're able to perform in your daily life. Maybe, hey, you have a weak hip abduction. Maybe there, you're going to have this weird condition called Trendelenburg syndrome. And basically, you know how models strut? That's basically going to be your new walk. You're going to be like, unts, 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 unts. And that's completely abnormal. You do not want to be walking that way. <laughs> Normally, at least. Or, um against against your will uh out, outside the control of your will okay <laughs> mm. i forgot they made a, a replica of him for the movie i know that's actually so funny i didn't i didn't really realize either. <laughs> huh so those people were trying out for auditions to be spongebob and patrick's boat i would <laughs> i i was not, not, not okay and, 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 
I was gonna say something, but I'm like, that's 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 a joke. Anyway, so trunk extension. So for trunk extensors, this is the Hasselhoff <laughs> um, movement that we're trying to do. So the really cool thing about MMT is that sometimes you apply pressure and sometimes you just let gravity take the wheel. So for in this particular case for trunk extension, we're going to have the patient prone. Prone again is a fancy word for them laying on their tummies with their head supported with a towel. There's going to be a pillow underneath their trunk or hips to again provide support because good, goodness knows, you know. <laughs> Uh, it's gonna keep their spine neutral as well and you're gonna have them have their hands behind their back because we don't want them pushing off to the side that would be weird and cheating and compensating and you don't want that <laughs> so 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 you're gonna have someone stabilize at the lower legs to kind of just keep it as this trunk extension motion so they don't raise their I don't how do you say it they don't raise their legs as well they don't look like a fish man I wish I could draw here I would <laughs> Go, go! <laughs> Sir! Hey, hi! Are you learning tip? <sighs> yes. Unfortunately, every study stream I learn, which should be a good thing, but I should just make myself accountable by not having to do study streams to learn. But I feel like replicating, replicating? Sorry. Speaking out the experience helps me and yada yada. <laughs> <laughs> but hi sir, hi hi, welcome, 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 welcome. Thank you for the tier one stuff for 17 oh hecky months. I am learning and these numbers are going to help me so good. Did you know lateral flexion, normal range of motion using the goniometer is 35? I think <laughs> and rotation is 45? I I I think <laughs> uh, let me let me double check. Yes, 45 35. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Uh, uh, anyway, it still counts as good progress. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you very, 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 very much. <laughs> I, it sounded like Elvis for a moment. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I just got here. Will this be on the exam? Yes, on Sunday at 10, 15 a.m. That is when I take my exam. <laughs> But I need to do super good so I can pass the class, so <laughs> hyperventilating. <laughs> Remember, Bearcat School is really picky. Uh, in my graduate program, you need a B or higher, and your girl doesn't have a B or higher. <laughs> but this practical is worth a lot of percent, so let's see it, okay? Anyway, trunk extension. Let's go, let's go, let's go, because I have to speed run this. Um, stabilize with the person, uh, a secondary person leaning, leaning, I guess, leaning or uh, uh, placing pressure onto their legs and have them extend their back or bringing their head up and their whole entire back up and just leave them there. That sounds really cruel, but just leave them there. Guide them through the motion. You're going to have them do this motion three times to make sure that they're able to do it. And on that fourth time, you're going to have them stay there. If the patient's able to hold that position for three to five seconds, they're normal. If they drop slightly, well, that's well, slight weakness. Um, if the patient drops halfway down from their original, like if this guy is like here, it's moderate weakness. And if he's just not able to hold it, then it's just, uh, I think they call it marked, marked weakness. So, wham wham. Feel free to try that again with your friends and family if you want to go assess to be like, haha, you have moderate weakness. <laughs> so, oblique trunk flexures, I just did not get there for whatever reason. <laughs> oh, then don't use me as a cheat sheet. You got this. In my no! <laughs> I have to. I, I, will, I will take anyone who provides. <laughs> I'll be like, okay, we're going to practice. But, you know, the cool thing about anatomy is that your your own body is a cheat sheet, so... Yay, yeah, I guess. You just gotta know what you're doing. I guess. <laughs> it's funny because a lot of my exams are online, and, like, you have to have, like, the camera on and everything. And some of these things are, like, very physical, what they ask. I have no shame in, like, doing the motion in front of the camera and being like, Okay, th the hip flexion of this, and if I flex my hips like that... <laughs> anyway... Um, okay, so, oh, Rip says, tip, I will politely pass out now, have a good rest of your studies, thank you, and politely wrap you up, so no hacking worries, please have a good one, have a good night, sweet dreams, I will see you tomorrow, life will be good, 
And thank you again for the raid earlier. I appreciate ya. Merry nap. <laughs> take care, take care. So, trunk flexors. When we're testing for a, a upper abdominal strength using MMT or manual muscle testing, it's going to be what you would typically expect. You're going to have the patient do a curl up. The really cool thing about this is that the curl ups are going to be the same thing. You're going to guide them through the motion. Hey, we're going to hold your feet down. You're going to only raise your trunk up, put your hands behind your head and come up. There's how they grade this is weird and I don't know why I, I don't have it written down. But um, if they're able to clear their scapula or shoulder blades, that's a three. If they're able to curl up, but if they're able to curl up but with their um, arms extended, that that's a four. If they're able to do it with their um, arms crossed, that's a four plus. I know it. Now we're just making up numbers now. And if they're able to do it with their, oh my gosh, uh, hands behind their head, then that's normal. It's a five. I wish I could show you a picture. Just, just, just think of a curl up, okay? You squeeze. All right, speed run. Uh, lower abdominals is really interesting because it's actually your legs. So you see right here, you'll have the legs right here. And then you'll ask the patient, hey, start slowly lowering your legs. One of the things that you want to detect with this is that if you feel a rotation of the ASIS. The ASIS, again, is going to be our anterior superior iliac spine, which we felt in the front of our bodies when we felt, again, our iliac crest. Flat hands to our side. Go down towards your feel ledge. And using your index finger to hold onto that ledge and bringing the thumbs to the front of the body and feeling up for a bony prominence, that's going to be your ASIS. When you feel a rotation or turn, that's when you stop and record. So this person, it looks like they're they're good. Like literally, they're, they're good. I, I would give them um, a four. And the grading skill goes from three to five. It's really like one to five. But the reason why we're starting off at three is because with anything with manual muscle testing, if they can do... If they can basically do the action against gravity, like if they can raise their leg, if they can raise their arm without any like trouble, they're automatically at three and it only goes up to five from there, you know? So yeah, this is why you just need to know like three is here at the starting position because they're just, well, they're just starting. And now if they can get almost all the way down to the table or down to the table without the ASIS rotating, they're good. <laughs> Wait, there's an M MMT for the quadrata? Heck. 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 <laughs> I'm gonna politely- I, there's, there's something that I'm missing. So I'm just gonna politely remind myself to please, like, do this, but in red. <laughs> that's, that's how I do my notes. Anyway. I think we're good. I think we're good because I have to, um run over to my uh, tutoring so what happened is there's a really good tutor that I have bless his absolute heart he's such a saint <laughs> he's so good he's so resourceful his sessions are a little long they're two hours but uh, we'll do what we can but he's just been super helpful and I hate missing his sessions his session started at uh, 5 30 so about 15 minutes ago so I'm just like wah, 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 wah. So we're going to try to see if I can get whatever knowledge I can in the next hour from him, okay? But I want to thank everyone for coming, and I will be live again tomorrow for the Gamers Outreach at 12 p.m. EST. Raising money for charity, playing some <laughs> games against my will, JK, JK. I'm playing games with Riff. We're going to be playing Apex just for our first times, and we're going to suffer, and it'll be funny because it's like, wow, you guys suck. It'll be like, yes, we do. <laughs> we're going to do Fortnite Among Us, but again, if there's a lot of people, we'll play regular Among Us. And uh, for our art tease friends, and if there's time, we're also going to be doing uh, Scribbly also. So feel free to join us. I am super excited to get it set up, set up, and I'm super excited to be a part of such a cool cause. So let's do it. <laughs> They'll be worthy. Yes, they will. Let's go. <laughs> Thanks for the stream tip. Good luck with the studies. Thank you. I will let you cubs know on Monday, hopefully, if I do stream. Um, 
how how it went if it went absolutely awful you won't see me for the rest of my life <laughs> because if i do bad then i'm gonna do bad like for what do you call it the whole entire class and then i'll get left back and then and then and then and then you, you know it just it just goes downhill <laughs> thank you for the interesting stream see you later thank you naga for staying i appreciate yeah did it rip get banned rip got unbanned <laughs> she got unbanned faster than um foul so if that tells you anything <gasps> breathe i got you <gasps> hi fine hi hi welcome and Toro, thank you for stream no problem Tom, thank you for stream no problem there thank you you're gonna win this whole thing that's what i'm hoping i'm hoping to win at life but god knows you know <laughs> but thank you i appreciate the uh emotional support it honestly does mean a lot because i'm just like ah oh. It's, I don't know, it's just a lot of pressure for, like, no reason. <laughs> Thanks for seeing, no problem, thank you for hanging out. The sir says there are no space for such doubts. I know, but it still sucks. He's hoping Faust will be freed. I know, I'm waiting for Faust to, like, I'm just waiting for Faust to be free. Alright, I'm also seeing, trying to see who we can raid. Who can we raid today? Who is new and we haven't raided before? Do 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 so 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 sorry. I'm trying to see who who's playing what right now. Da 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 da. Someone's doing Jackbox games. This person's doing art. Oh, I think I know this this other person. Ah, they normally don't stream at this time, so hold on. Let's see how long they- They've been streaming for seven hours. Huh? What? <laughs> no wonder- No wonder I'm seeing them. I'm like, oh wow, I don't normally see- Oh. <laughs> huh? Here's hoping Fals will be free. Yeah, I know. Blue says, by the way, Tiffany, if you need any medical equipment like portable massage- Uh massage beds you can always put them on throne and enable crowdfunding thank you i noticed that they started doing crowd uh crowdfunding and i was i was looking to see about the uh how do you call it eh, oh my goodness how do you say it the massage tables but thankfully uh one of the higher ups higher ups oh my god eh, cohort upper class yes the upper classmen uh someone who had just graduated from the program was getting rid of their things and she's like yeah even though these massage tables go for a little over a hundred dollars i'm selling mine for 30 because a it's used and b has cat scratches i'm like bro i have a cat it's okay i'll buy it off 30 that's such a steal let's go <laughs> so yeah no worries no worries but i will definitely keep it in mind thank you so very much I was gonna be really cheap <laughs> and be like, maybe I should do uh, uh, a little subathon or something because I recently spent a thousand dollars trying to fix my AC in my car and I'm like, I need to recuperate for this somehow and I'm like, no, I don't. That's why I have savings for a rainy day when, you know, a heat wave decides to go across the whole entire country and your AC decides to die that week. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I took it out. No worries, no worries. <laughs> Just watch out for the scale and who's covering the shipping costs. Yeah, no, 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 no. I so this was a part of my school program. I ended up just meeting her in person, which is always very scary. But I, I realize there's nothing to be too scared about. I'm like, hey, she wouldn't randomly murder me. She just graduated from the program. Why would she want to ruin her life that way? <laughs> Naga says, oh, the seven hour person. I don't know if I should raid them right now. They're playing Fire Emblem. Three hopes. And I'm glad that they're having fun, and I really like the look of their model. But I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's smart. I know it, but I had the rainy. Let me, let me put a poll. But let me also like chill out my stuff. So sorry. So sorry. So sorry. So sorry. So I'm, I'm just spamming now. So I apologize. Uh, if you're new here, welcome. Uh, feel free to join the Discord if you have a Discord. Be a cool cup. Let's go, let's go. And join the cup club. On Mondays, we do anime nights. Uh, so this upcoming Monday, we're going to watch apparently the final episode of Spy Family. But I don't think so, right? I think they might have more. Or maybe they'll stop for the season. I'm not entirely sure. And Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Let's go. On Twitter, I have my schedule up again. Tomorrow, 12 p.m. Let's go. EST streaming again. And then hopefully by... Monday, I'll have another schedule up soon, okay? So let's play more near and do a cup of Jesus most likely. I don't think I have to study 
But if I do have to do a study stream, I'll let you guys know. <laughs> and then socials is where I have my YouTube and uh, all the other cool stuff. Uh, the TikToks, which I haven't updated. But uh, YouTube has a uh, queue of videos, so if you ever want to catch up on tip of streams, I gotcha. <laughs> huh? By the way, if you need a cheap one, a safari bed plus towels might work. Oh no, 100% sure. I live off towels. <laughs> Season 2 could work? Let's go! And no, I tables the tables can't be that low because my body mechanics and yada yada. I guess I can always do a deep a deep squat trying to like treat people, but it will suck. It will suck so hard and my back will be bad and then I will have an early end to my career. I retire very early. Anyway, I'm so sorry. I'm procrastinating. Um, so someone's playing the Fire Emblems. They have a cool model. Cool. <laughs> I'll just put cool. Cool? I'll put the little cool emoji. Um, I don't know what this person's do. Oh. Th <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what is this person doing? They're just chatting. And like the title of the stream is Guessing VTubers Eggplant Size. So I guess we're not going there because I refuse to know about eggplants any longer. Oh, someone's already doing the charity stream. <gasps> charity stream. Char charity, charity art stream. Um, there's someone playing Elden Ring. And someone's playing Please Be Happy. That's at the end. Sorry. I, I, I. Oh, who, who is this person? Let me play, close that out. And someone's just watching a hippo. Oh, someone's just watching YouTube if you want to hang out and watch YouTube. So I'll start the poll from there. <laughs> um, I can just show you the cool model. We don't have to read into them, I guess. But their name is uh, The Light... The, the Light... Wait. The Light Oz? Oh man, I've been reading their name wrong this whole time. I've been reading it as like the light toss. <laughs> cool or cool? I I like the art direction. <laughs> I know you're okay, Blue. I appreciate the DIYs. I do, I do, I do. But let me see. Yeah, no. I, I think we're good. But yeah, while we get that going, let's get the raid messages as well. So if you're not subscribed, don't worry, no pressure, all that good stuff. Feel free to still participate in the raid though, you hackers. I uh, will be uh, you can use the berry emoji with the gal gal raid. And if you are subscribed, feel free to use the tip of gal with the gal gal raid. But yeah. I like the art direction. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how else to say it. I I like how you look. I like what your artist did. <laughs> I, I can't say too much because I also like what Terrier did, so. <laughs> and of course, if you haven't supported Terrier already, please do give her your support. She's the one who made me this cute and she recently did a live. Well, an updated live 2D, um, how do you say it? A model. Super, 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 super cool. Let's see. Uh... Is it okay if I, if I just do this? Look at her head turn! Look at it go! Look at it! Look at it! <laughs> anyway. Uh, what else? Oh, it's not zoomed in anymore. Heck. Let me just take this off. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, please do give her your support. Let me do do. Let me do do. But so far, it looks like we have a pretty good lead on the charity art stream, which I am I am not mad about. So for those who had voted for YouTube, this person is doing YouTube. If you want to hang out, she is um, watching manatees right now. So and sharks. I, I guess it's just like aquarium stuff. Aquarium stuff. I'm so sorry. Uh, a sea life stuff. Imagine having an exorcist type scene. <laughs> no, 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 thank you. Be like. <laughs> um, for the couple wanted to see, please be happy. It's Clementine Cloud. It's a cute VN. I also like the art direction of it. <laughs> um, no one voted for Elden Ring, so we're good there. <gasps> oh no, please don't tell me this person's ending. 
Okay, we have to go raid it before this person ends. We have to go raid before this person ends. We gotta go raid before this person ends. Wait, does it sound like they're ending? Nope, it doesn't sound like she's going, so we're just gonna go for it. <laughs> Tippa, the art direction enjoyer. You gotta. Anyway, I'm sorry. We're no longer gonna try to stay in silence. Make sure you got the uh, raid message copied and pasted, and I will see you cups pretty early. Um, if everything goes well, well, quotation marks, um, maybe I'll stream a little bit earlier than 12, and so we can have a slightly longer stream, and then life will be good, and then I go to school. <laughs> But for now, please have a good one, everyone. Be safe <laughs> in these next few hours. And if I don't get to see you tomorrow, no worries. I hope to see you next week. Please have a good weekend. Lots of love to you, okay? Bye, 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 I hope she's really not ending. I will cry. I will cry. I will cry. Raid message. Please don't. Please don't end. Please don't end. Okay. Goodbye.